Oops. Ah. All right. We have sound back. Hi. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's learning space. We are at a, uh, a, a different time this week, so thank you for joining us. Uh, my co-host, Georgia, is probably home in bed. <laughs> I'm still at the office and uh, preparing for my class. And uh, so I'm really happy to be here and bring you guys a show. Uh, remember that if you want to ask questions or leave comments, you can use the question and answers app or the Q&A app. Uh, it's probably right down at the bottom of your screen right now. If you're watching this on YouTube, Google Plus, or anywhere else that it's embedded, uh, click on that where it says join the conversation and you can come join and say hello and ask your questions. I had a couple people uh, send in questions ahead of time because they knew they wouldn't be able to make the show uh, and they'll be watching again uh, a little bit later. So I would like to introduce my, my guest today, Arvind Gupta. So welcome. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I, I was alerted to uh, your project, which is uh, uh, called Toys from Trash. And yes. so why don't you tell us a little bit of what is what is this concept of Toys from Trash? Well, the Toys from Trash is a very simple concept. We love we live in a world which is full of junk, mm -hmm. and uh, you know piles of bottles, tetra packs, all kinds of everything comes back in three packagings, three layers of packaging. First you remove the plastic and, and then, the, then the cardboard and then the paper and then you can access the material. So there is piles and piles of junk littering all around us. And our idea was that if we can recycle some of this and make them into joyous toys for children, we can also make, uh, we imbue a value that uh, don't waste, don't litter up the world. Um, some kind of a earth consciousness that it's your task also to clean up this earth and at the same time make something very joyous out of it which is zero cost, which is low cost, which the poorest children on earth can enjoy and have fun. And I think that unless children play, there would never be peace on earth. That's an excellent, oh my gosh, that's an excellent idea. Um, so tell us a little bit about some of these these toys that you've you've how many of these these have you put together? Well, we have almost a thousand toys. Uh, we, we, we don't call them science projects because the horrendous way science is taught in schools, it gives children a distaste for this very beautiful subject. Yeah. So we instead we call them toys because every child wants to play. God sent them to play on earth. And <laughs> so, uh, you know, for instance, uh, we make uh, a very nice, this is the kind of a spinner, which just uses two bottles. Mm -hmm. And uh, bottles are littered all over the place. So with two bottles, you can make a very nice turbine and a spinner. And if you attach it to a uh, to a magnet and it spins inside a coil, then you can light a LED. Now this is kind of a generator. This is the future. Of oh, I see it's blinking. Yes, you can see it's blinking. <laughs> As the fan spins, there are two magnets spinning inside a coil, and the ends are attached to a LED. And this is the future of all energy. Today, Germany produces 30% of all its electricity from solar voltaic and and the wind. And this is what the future is going to be like. So, if we can if we can excite children uh, with simple models like this, I don't think they're ever going to forget science. They'll be hooked to science for life. So you 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 said you, you have over a thousand of these toys designed. Are you ever going to run out of ideas, or do you still have more that's coming? No. Well, what happens is that uh, there are many many people who 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 gift us their junk, mm. and uh, and because uh, people have a kind of a guilt conscience, many people feel guilty about producing so much of junk, and so we are surrounded with tetra packs, with old matchboxes, with old slippers, cycle tubes, old pens, refills. Refills, for instance, ball pen refills are a very, very nice material. You can make many, many things out of them. Uh, we use a pencil. Now, this is a toy which has been there for 100 years. Here is a pencil with a couple of notches. You can see the notches over here. Okay. It's a notch over here. And if I just uh, put a, if I just uh, Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it's a very nice thing. 
How is that working? I'm not sure how that's... <laughs> This is because of vibrations, because if I'm, if I'm rubbing it with a stick in the notches, there are vibrations which, which produce. And this is, non, this is fun physics. This is non-trivial physics. There have been six major research papers in this toy, and you don't need the Hadron Collider, six billion dollars for making it. <laughs> I think that's the nice fun part of it. <laughs> there we do no, we, we, Oh, go ahead. Yeah, well, this is another. This, it's a small butterfly. Oh, okay. It's a flat. Uh, just, uh, you know, this is a fruit juice straw, a thin straw inside a fat straw. And if you just uh, uh, move the, well, you can see this, this head is the, and the butterfly. Now, every child would like to make a thing like that. Uh, using old newspapers, now, you know, India is a land of cricket. Cricket is a national pastime, like football or soccer might be in, in the USA. But uh, all our children want to make a small cap like this. Now, this oh is... Oh, my God! This is a... This is just half a newspaper, and you make, you make a very nice cool cap like this. And if one child makes a cap like this, look, there is a peer pressure. The whole class wants to make it. So we make a dozen caps like this. This is our national cap. It's also called as the Nehru cap. Oh. Right. Most of the politicians in India wear a cap like that. Yeah. So children make it. And whenever children are folding a cap, it's like a geometry laboratory. Because all the polygons which they read about in the abstract, with the old newspaper, they can fold them and make a cap in which they can wear. Now, this is this is something. It's a very nice box. So first is the children fold. There is no glue. There is no is staples. There in the anything holding it together is just folded. Yeah. And and they can make a box like that. And then they can well they can make a box like that. And then in this box, well they can make all the toys and can take it back. No plastic bags. And well, I don't have very much hair on my head. So if I go out in the sun, it protects me from the scorching sun. <laughs> That's the nice thing about it. So make a dozen caps just using old newspapers with the cheapest paper you can get anyway. So our purpose is to reach out to the poorest children, children who have the least amount of resources, children who have been taught to taught, taught science in a very rote, in a very monotonous way to inject, to imbue uh, the love of science through small activities which are accessible to them. That's the whole purpose. So what is the science education system like for children in India? Um, any child well, in India or especially the, the poorer children? Well, it's, uh, most schools don't, do not have a science laboratory at all. All the science is learned by rote. They mug up definitions, they mug up formulae, and they're very good at, you know, at soaking all this up and spitting it out in the exam. So they get very high scores, but they've really understood very little how a thing works. Now, for instance, now this is a very small model. You can see it's like, like a syringe generator. Now, medical technology produces so much of junk. This is an old plastic syringe. I can, nothing yeah, to I can syringe make. And these are two strong magnets, neodymium magnets, which I push inside. Mm -hmm. And this is the rubber stopper. And if I just, uh, this is uh, uh, a thousand tons of insulated copper wire, and they're attached to a LED. And you can see the LED right over here in my hand. And if I just move the syringe, Oops. you can see. Oh, I see it. I see it, I see it blinking. <laughs> You can see the LED light. Now, this is uh, you know, all the Faraday's laws of electromagnetism, which they have learned in school, and which means so little to them. Now, if a village child can generate light up a small LED, there is a paradigm shift that I'm no more a consumer, I'm a producer. Mm -hmm. Today, I light up one LED, tomorrow, I light up my village. And this is a very doable kind of a project. It doesn't require multi-million dollars to put it up. Because, you know, the magnets you might have to buy, uh, the wire you might have to buy, but the rest is all very, very low cost. For instance, you know, this is the electric motor. But there is rare is a child who ever makes the electric motor. Now, you see, this, the simplicity is the cheapest electric motor on Earth. Ah! <laughs> It's a 1.5 volt battery. These are two safety pins. Uh, this is an old bicycle tube. And just one meter of insulated copper wire. It takes 10 minutes for a child to make it. And children are just hooked on to making a thing like wow. that. They understand a great deal about good science 
only by messing around, dirtying their hands and making simple models. And this is not for the richy rich. The poorest children can uh, can have a great deal of fun uh, making toys like that. And this is not part of the Indian system. Ours is very much rote uh, and which is very sad because Indian children, like children anywhere else in the world, have enormous potential. And given a chance, well, they could do great things. So it just shows possibilities which exist and with very simple material. So how widely are these, um, do you know of these toys being spread? I mean, is it, is it all throughout the country? Has it spread well, all around the world? Well, well, the internet has given us a great leverage. Uh, we set up a website about 10 years back, and there are every single day 50,000 children across the world uh, view our videos in 18 languages. We have dubbed them, we find partners, collaborators across the world. For instance, we found Dr. Breezy Okana Flacker. She's in the Dominican Republic, They're just next to Haiti, one of the poorest countries. And she came, she visited our science center and she said, well, this is what my children need. And today she has done almost 300 of her videos into Spanish. And the result has been that millions of children across Latin America have seen our videos in Spanish. Mm -hmm. But we have our Hindi is a major language in India. Marathi is my, the state language of my state. So we have in 15, 16 Indian languages our videos. Because if it's in the local language, it is magic for children. They understand it so much better. They are clever. And then they go about making things. That's and this is, and, and just last year, the government of India is a very gargantuan organization. We are the largest democracy on earth. And uh, it's how this country works, it's difficult to figure out. <laughs> because the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. But uh, there are good people in our government. Last year, the government set up something called the National Repository of Open Educational Resources. And because all our films, all our videos, and the Creative Commons, a thousand of our videos they put on the national website. Oh, wow. And they have teachers and children across the country. And we feel deeply honored that they've been put on the national website. And this is a small task. If the government, this is in a democracy, if the government is sleeping, we must wake them up. <laughs> this is the task of, of a civil society to wake up its government. So your, your toys, they cover science, they cover technology, they even, I see some that are math magic, so you're really hitting all of the, the major... Well, but we, have, we, have, we have a lot of videos, on, you know, this is, this is any typical calendar, as you can see, and, and then you can see that if you just look at the calendar, there's so much magic in the calendar, and, and you can see that if I just take the cross numbers, 2 plus 10 is 12, 3 plus 9 is 12, 16 plus 22 is... 38, 23 plus 15 is 38. You know, there's so many patterns in a calendar. Oh my God, so I can't believe I never put that together. <laughs> <laughs> 3 by 3 matrix, 2 plus 18 is 20, which is double of 10, 4 plus 16 is 20, double of 10, 17 plus 3 is 20, double of 10, 11 plus 9 is 20, which is double of 10. So the average of all these numbers is the middle number 10. So if someone will ask you, what is the addition of all these nine numbers? You just look at the middle number 10 and multiply by 9. You know, this is magic in the calendar, which is there in every house, in every school, in every office. And we look at it and still, you no know, science is about probing deeply. Yeah. And you can get many, many good things out of it. You just blew my so, mind with the calendar thing. <laughs> like, suppose, suppose you were just to take a, a, a standing row like, a row like that. What is this, this row? If I just look at it, I'll say it's 70. Because 7 plus 13 is 20, which is double of 10. 8 plus 12 is 20, which is double of 10. 9 plus 11 is 20, which is double of 10. So the average of all these numbers, the middle number 10, 7 days in a week, 10 into 7 is 70. Wow. So there is amazing magic in the calendar. And we have put some of this, we've tried to capture some of this in our books, in our videos. Uh, you can do fractions in a very practical manner. Because, you know, maths might be very abstract, but uh, suppose you want to make a building, you need scaffolding. Right. Uh, before you can put the uh, next floor in the next floor. But, you, so children like that need teaching aids, because they, before they go any the higher, they need concrete. From the concrete to the abstract, from the near to the far. Now, these are cardinal principles of any education, and we try and do this. This is something very, very simple, as you can see now. This is this is math sticks, and this is cycle value. 
you know, these are joints just made with a small needle. And school going children can make a small icosahedron. This is icosahedron, but 20 sided, just with the needle. Matchsticks they found in every village. You can't light the whole fire unless you have the match bar. Now the cycle valve tube is available in if there is a mechanical contraption which has reached all Indian villages, is the bicycle. This is a cycle valve tube. And in this you can find you can find you can buy by weight. And children can make a small joint like this. Now this is a joint of two. We start by teaching angles to them. With three, they make a triangle, they make a hexagon, and they make all kinds of very, very beautiful figures with these. And they can see that this hexagon is very, very flexible. If I pull this out, this becomes a rectangle. But the square might look very square and prim, but you give it a push, this becomes like a rhombus. It distorts. But then you give a child a triangle, and no matter what she does, you can't do a thing to a triangle. Now, this is the bedrock of all civil and mechanical engineering. If you wish to make any structure rigid, you've got to divide this into triangles. And children could actually hold this concept in their own hands. And this is, we're not talking about fancy stuff, which a supplier supplies. Matchboxes are at home, children can just buy cycle value, and they can start growing it. They can make lots and lots of structures. Now, this is like the cheapest mechano. If, if they make a, now this is a cube, if they make a cube and they put a pyramid on top, well, you make a village house. You can make two, four, six, eight, and they're flexible joints which take any angle. And you can make school going children can make a very simple model. This is an icos, this is a model of methane. It's molecular structure of methane. Four atoms of hydrogen at the four corners of the tetrahedra. In between is a small orange bead which represents the carbon. So this is CH4. Wow. Uh, and and children, small school boy children make small models of, uh, of, uh, of molecules. So this is something very, very interesting for children. Very extremely low cost. We make lots and lots of pumps. And here is a pump with which children can inflate a balloon. Now, just see this. Wait, what is that? What, what material is that black thing? Now, this is a wool bicycle tube. Uh, oh, and and this, this one is a, it's a film can. Now, they're disappearing. The film cans are disappearing because yeah. uh, everyone's got a digital camera yeah. or they can do photographs from mobile. And there is a valve over here. If I blow from here, they can pass through. So this is green light and this is red light. You make a very nice valve. And there's another valve over here. And the, the black uh, rubber is um, it's like the bellows, so it's like a balloon. And children can inflate this pump, and they can dismantle the whole thing and put it back again. Now, there are no, no rubber parts over here, so children will never forget as to how a pump works. Yeah. And all children are born inventors. They, 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 they're very curious cats. Why do children break toys? They have a slogan that the best thing a child can do is to break a toy. Not because children are curious, because they're the only curious cats left. They want to, they want to rip it open, want to see what is inside it. How, how, how on earth does it work? So they're very curious about it, and this is what uh, it makes childhood so interesting. And the, one of the very nice things which I'd like to share with you is this slate which we made, and this is meant for, this is meant for blind children. Now you can see this is a piece of cardboard, and this is, this is strips of Velcro. Okay. Now Velcro we two strips with nylon, uh, one with hooks and with loops, and they stick together like this. Now this is just with the hooks, and this is like a wool dispenser. Now this is a pen. If I crank the handle, you can see that the wool is getting wrapped. And now a child can just, a blind child can just draw. Oh my god, I love this. <laughs> and just take some Velcro. That's it. Full and then of, like thread on, on Velcro, yeah. Yes. Wool sticks on Velcro is as simple as that. Yeah. India has 13 million visually impaired children, visually challenged children, and this is kind of a great boon for them. Now, 13 million is a hell of a lot of numbers. The, it is more than the population of many small countries. Yeah. So every blind school in India uses this. This school is a touching slate because uh, children, blind children, uh, read by touching, they can feel this, but it touches the heart. It goes very, very deep into this. So uh, we try and make things for children, because there is, a, in the last census, uh, 
because of poverty, because of malnutrition, seven or eight, you know, something like seven or eight percent of our children have some kind of special needs stroke. And we need to design very low cost teaching aids for them so that they can have fun. Now, one of the great things which we do is this uh, thing with the ordinary, ordinary stroke. Uh, we just cut with the scissors, we cut a pointed end. It's, it's like the pencil point, and uh, so there you are. And there is a kind, this is the kind of reed. I'm going to put this reed in my mouth and just blow my lungs out. And Our podcast. <laughs> it makes podcast readers are going to love that. <laughs> they can't see all of it. But they can't see, that. see how it works uh, because you now this is the reed. If I suck in air, you can actually see. <laughs> this is why we. And the, the great experiment is to keep keep uh, keep blowing at it, keep making the noise and keep cutting it, and this is amazing. <laughs> now, the element of sound, yeah. now, the poorest child on that, just a piece of throwaway straw. The elements of uh, of how a flute works are there, and this is the shortest straw, as you can see, with the highest pitch. <laughs> and this is with the children taught us. And, uh, <laughs> we all have made sounds like this. <laughs> These are primordial sounds. And uh, this is great fun for children. Oh my God. And if it's not fun, I think it's not learning. So the best elements of science must come in a in large pointer of joys to children. And then they will be hooked on for science because science is very, very interesting. There is science all around us. Oh my gosh. So um what can you tell us a little bit about some of your astronomy themed toys? Do you have any astronomy themed ones? Not to we have another group. I, I work in a in an institute which offers a PhD in astronomy and astrophysics. And there is a group which looks after making small telescopes. Uh, they, there are night sky sessions where children are introduced to the wonders of the night sky. They do this part and we do all the rest. Okay. Which you a little glimpse of what else we do. Oh, because I see you have, a, you have an astronomy section on there, amazing astronomy, and so you've got a whole <laughs> bunch of, again, really simple things. You have like a little black hole, moon phase is, is the best. You have like a light and a ball, and there you go, <laughs> you can demonstrate the moon phases. And uh, this, you know, we, well, it's not just, just science, but there is a lot of art over here. Now, yeah. this, is a, this, is a, this is a piece of uh, wire, twisted wire. You just take a pencil and wind a wire to make a small spring. You remove the spring, pull out both the ends so you get a spiral. And these are pieces of cut straw. And at the ends are two beads. And if I just turn this, and you will just see this. Wait. Oh, hang on. It's out of the frame. There we go. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Oh my god, it's like a little rainbow worm. It's like, it's like a rainbow moving, removing rainbow. So it's a very, very simple toy. We have this, this is like an acrobat, a kind of a spinning toy. And look at this. Oh! <laughs> if you just, you know, the hands and the legs are all hinged. All you need is a needle and a thread. You tie a knot, pull out a needle, and tie another knot over here. So they're just, you can see the arms and the hands and the legs. And this is, this is a broomstick. And if I just flip it like this, you can see this. Spinning around. And you know, basic elements of what a centrifuge is like this, because if I hold it in both hands, it's like a flying man. <laughs> yeah, and like you were saying, centri centrifugal force is a huge word for a child, but that toy... Absolutely. Yeah, demonstrate. And this is, I think, something which is very, very popular, is this uh, small levitating pencil. Now we have a little piece of foam rubber, with the four magnets, you can see these are four ring magnets, and there are two on this pen. And if I just put it over here, like this, you can see I can just, just twirl this. Now this is a pen which is just hanging. I love it. It levitates. It spins, it writes, and it levitates. So something which costs, now literally tens of thousands of children uh, in my city of Pune have made this toy. Wow. And they just 
love doing this. It's very, very cheap. It's, it doesn't cost much money because it's always so much more fun to make your own voice. Now, one of the great toys, very simple ones which you made, was just take an ordinary, ordinary straw and ordinary straw, and you just put a, 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 a skewer in it or a broomstick in it and leave about two finger widths and make half cuts both in the left and the right and you can see these arms can now swivel and you bend them to make a kind of a triangle like this and then you take this and tape, tape this in. Now this is the final version. It takes less than two minutes. Now I'm going to spin this in a mug of water. Now this is the mug of water and you can just see this. Woo! <laughs> Oh, it's, cool. it's an amazing centrifuge. <laughs> now it costs very little money to make a thing like this. And imagine children of class one, class two, you know, watering small potted plants with this. You know, they, they would they would be hooked on to science. They would uh, never. This is another pump which we make. We make 31 different kinds of pumps. Pumps with a dump on our website. And this is all toothpaste tubes are not for throwing because you could do great things. This is all all called a toothpaste tube, and you just cut it in the middle. This one is transparent, which is very nice. Then this is where the threads are. You put a balloon over here and chop. In one go, you cut half the balloon. Now this becomes like a small valve. If I blow from this end, air will pass through and we make this flutter and make some noise. <coughs> but if I want to suck in, I can't suck in. So this is red light and this is red light. This is one way traffic. And because this, uh, this tube is a, a flexi tube, I can push this below. Now this is a valve and there's a small opening over here for the water to come out. And if I just hold it like this, and if I just move it, reciprocate it in this, you know, slowly. You have a sprinkler. The would be full and water would come out. Now this costs no money. A throwaway toothpaste tube. And you can make a great pump. And elements of what a valve is, what one-way traffic is. Now a valve in a pump is equivalent to a diode in electronics. Because the current can flow in one direction, here water flows in one direction. So these, there's a great deal of equivalence across various branches of science. And this is something which is made by a girl who comes from a very, very poor family. It just shows the possibilities. Now today the world over it is called as the bottle turbine. You can see this. And you just take ordinary cotton, cut the bottom of it. This is like a tube. Now this is the lid. And I just made an off-center hole in this lid. Put two safety pins, tape them with red tape, and put a small turbine. <laughs> now I just screw on the lid. And if I were to just move it in a bottle of water, and you can just see this. Wow. This moving. Where do you come up with all of these ideas? Where where have people come up with all of these ideas? Well, there are many interesting people who visit us every day and share our ideas, their ideas with us. Look, I think our unique point is that we are very good doc at documenting. Mm -hmm. And we credit everyone. Ideas, good ideas come from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And we, you see on our website, designed by so-and-so, inspired by so-and-so. We first credit them and we make a small low cost film and just put it. Because we think that there are so many learners across the world who are looking for good ideas, low cost ideas, uh, and someone will just latch on to it. And it's because of this I think we, we owe a lot to the children of the world that 32 million of them have been to our website and seen our videos in many, many languages. Many of them write to us and feel deeply gratified to do a little bit to help children across the world. But we are people who ask us, what is your business model? I think life is too short for businesses. Life is <laughs> too, too, too sacred to sell anything. Uh, we, must, we can only share our passions. Uh, we are privileged uh, to be living a good life. And uh, all, all our life should be spent in designing for children who don't have stuff. Because if children are playing, children are happy, then only would there be peace on earth. I sincerely believe in this. Oh my gosh. Can you tell us a little bit about the Science Center where you're working? The Science Center was set up about 10 years back. And uh, I work in a, this Center for Astronomy. It's called the Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics. It was set up by India's most leading and decorated astrophysicist. His name is Professor Jain Nardlikar. 
he went to Cambridge in England and did his PhD as his father did earlier to him. So he comes from a, a great family of mathematicians and he set up this, family, this uh, science center and it was his belief that apart from giving a PhD in astronomy and astrophysics, we must have a small children's science center and we must try and imbue children with the love of science. And he invited me 10 years back and I've been blessed with a small, extremely compassionate uh, team, just three people working out of a uh, 400 square feet room and uh, every day we document a film. We have never been short of ideas in all these years to document our stuff. We put this, and this is for instance, one, one, one is this about, uh, uh, as you can see that. Now this is just uh, you know, 70, 80 straws which are sandwiched between two layers, uh, two layers of uh, tape, and we just give it, you can see an incident ray and a reflective ray back. And, and we can take a twist them, and you can see what a crest is, what a trough is. It's something which costs very, very little money. For, yeah, for well, less, uh, for yeah, less than a quarter US dollar. And you can, you can just see that if you, if you just, you know, if I, if I give it a, if I give it, send a message, it comes back to me. I'm able to transmit the message. Yeah. The straws vibrate at their points. So these, the straws are not traveling physically, but they're able to transmit my message. Now, all, all the, everything is about waves today. All kinds of communications are about waves. And if true, we can learn science through very simple models like this. I think we concretize their ideas. The theory will fall into place. It is not just, uh, just theory, but uh, things will fall into place. So this is what we genuinely feel about. Yeah, I was just thinking, next time I, I need a demonstration, I'm not going to go buy it from a science store. You can make just about anything you need. That's and so what we have in our center is, you know, all kinds of bottles, all kinds of tetra packs, all kinds of flip-flops, slippers, you know, boxes. People donate old pens, straws. So our, our center is full of stuff like that. And uh, we are surrounded with very interesting stuff. And you know the nice thing about working with local stuff is something goes wrong, but it's not the end of the earth, <laughs> the end of the world. You can always try again. <laughs> so I think this also should be children. You know they get this kind of a confidence. If something doesn't work, and when children are making their own toys, they don't need to be evaluated. They don't need to be given an A grade or a B grade because the toy is always giving them a feedback. If it doesn't work, the child instinctively knows that I've gone somewhere wrong and I need to mend it. To make it work, right. and the greatest joy, if a, if a toy works the first time, it is no good. The child must make it work by repeatedly working on it, and it builds up strength, it builds up tenacity in a child that I can make it. And I think that's a great feeling. You learn by failing and fixing it. I mean, that's such an important skill to to know. Absolutely. And put, 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 you know, cut things, glue them together, assemble things, you know, and making them work. And different kinds of materials. You know, wherever I go in my country, I'm invited to many, many schools. I've been to 3,000 schools in my country. And everywhere, you know, one, is, one material which they use is the styrofoam because it's a very workable material. And I feel, once I was invited on the environment day to a school, and they used piles and piles of styrofoam to cut trees. And I said, yuck. Now, this is not environmental sensibility. Yeah. <laughs> One feels very, very pained of, uh, you know, how the, in the name of the environment, how things are further being destroyed. And I feel pained about it. This is something called a scene, uh, a very, very simple, it's called as a flexicon. And you can see that uh, it's called, as, it is designed by a mathematician at Harvard, Arthur Stone in 1928. You can see uh, there are four pictures. The first are the butterflies. And uh, which are insects. Insects are eaten by the frogs. Frogs are eaten by the snakes. Snakes are eaten by the eagles. So you can just keep going on, keep flexing it. And and this is like a food chain that is all this. And you could put all kinds of cycles. And if you just had a piece of, this is an old photocopy or a Xerox sheet uh, printed on one side, white on the other. And what I could do is with just this, no glue, no scissors. In three minutes, I could just like this. And this is absolutely magical. Because science is all about cycles, about stories, about sequences, about chains. And children can draw them and make their own flexibles. And if you could do this in a municipal school, you could do this in a village school. All you, all you need is a piece of old 
photocopy paper or scale in a pencil. No scissors, no glue. And you need to make a world-class model like this. We probably have made more flakes than anyone else in the world. <laughs> you uh, you mentioned even things like old sandals. Do you have that puzzle yeah. that you showed me earlier? We use a lot of this. You know, this is this it. is made for old, old proper slipper. These are flip flops. And we just cut these, these are cutouts. Now this is more like a Montessorian puzzle. It's blue on one side and it is white on the other side. It's white on the other side. And you see, the blue stands on a white background, the white stands on a blue background. So you don't need to paint it up. And even for a, for a, for a child who is visually impaired, then, then they can actually feel, you can see, this is just sitting out. And this child can just feel it all over the place. There are no sharp edges anywhere. And it costs no money. This is lying on the roads. So we made some 20, 30 buses just using old flip flops or slippers for blind children. This, for instance, is a very nice abacus. Oh, wow. This is, the, this is the units, and you just one, two. The height is such that only, uh, the height is such that only uh, nine beads can come. So this is nine. How could you pick ten? So you take one, put in the tens place. This is ten. And if this is full, you get 90. If both of them are full, you get 90 and 9, 99. How do you depict 100? You put one in the hundreds place. This is 100. This would be 110. If I put this over here, this is 101. This is 102. And this is 120. If all of them are full, you get 999. 999 is the highest score. If there is no beat, you get zero. The other is when children are in the class 8 or 9, they study about the basic principles of light. Now what happens if it's a plane mirror? This, the, the slipper is like a plane mirror. A beam strikes, it just rebounces back, goes back the same way. But what happens if it's a concave mirror? And children, you know, these, now you can see if it's a concave mirror, they all meet at a focus. Now this, this by drawing a picture on a blackboard, no one understands. Yeah. With the slipper, we can show that what convergence is. If it's a convex mirror, they diverge. And you can just show what divergence is and what convergence is. Now, it's a very simple age. You just you just turned an abacus into an optics demonstration. Once again, you've blown my mind. <laughs> That's really cool. With an abacus and a small tool to understand as to how does a concave mirror focus rays at a particular point. And the focus actually means the fireplace where all the all the beams come and meet. So but these are very, very simple aids uh, to excite children uh, and tell them that science is all around them. And they just need to critically look at things, pick up things, mess around, dirty their hands, and science will be fun. Uh, one, of the, one of the very nice things is uh, this. Uh, it's, it's a very, very popular way. Now, this is uh, my, the, my friends are just going to put it together. How do you balance? These are ordinary nails, four, four inches long nails. How do you balance a dozen nails on the head of this nail? Now, this looks like an impossibility, but you just see that in a jiffy, and there is no magnets at all in this. How do you put this on top of this? And they're just going to put this on top of this, and I'm going to lift it up. Uh, yeah. Actually, just this. Now, I'm just, now they are arranged in a particular manner. And then what we do is, yeah, we just lift up this assembly. You can see. Wow. There are 10 of them. But there is one below, one on the top. And the eight are, the heads of eight nails are wedged. And if I just put this gently in this, and it will pull, pull. And it can also rock. Wow. <laughs> That's a good design, kind of design challenge. Oh now, we don't require a standard laboratory for doing this. Children in villages, because if, if people live in houses, they've got to make frames and window frames and door frames. Four inches nails are accessible everywhere. So this is an ordinary day object, and children can make such a fun toy with this. We had a comment earlier from uh, Hugo Burnham, who uh, said he uh, likes the idea of the umbrella planetarium in particular. Okay, oh, that's very nice. Uh, we had a design student who was in turn with us. He, his, his name was Vivek, and he, used to, he worked uh, uh, in the Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, as a designer, and he spent a month with this. 
and uh, he knew that we were the center of astronomy. So this is a old idea that you take an umbrella, and in that umbrella, uh, uh, you, uh, yeah. In it, oh, that's very nice. <laughs> in the umbrella, he, this is you can actually see Vivek uh, in this in drawing uh, in the process, and he put up all those uh, right. all those constellations and galaxies, and of course uh, the, uh, the the pointer points towards the pole star, and so you could actually spin this, and you would get that how the uh, how the crown of the sky moves, and all the patterns slowly move. So he had put all these things away, huh? some of the basic constellations, important constellations. That's really cool. So it's a very low cost idea uh, to making a very a very simple planetarium, you know, just to get a feel for children about this. Uh, my city does not still have a um, uh, you know, planetarium. It's a, it's, a, it's a big city. It doesn't have a planetarium, which is said. And uh, some of the bigger cities, the metros have, have it. Uh, but Pune, where I live, doesn't have a good planetarium. But in 1954, uh, you know, the first planetarium was gifted to a small school. It's called the New English School in Pune. In 1954, and the president of India at that time, uh, Dr. Radhakrishnan, who was a philosopher, came down to inaugurate it. Now, this, uh, this, uh, it, probably this is the only working planetarium, a small one of that kind still in the world. Uh, for years, it uh, was not working because the lamp had busted. Mm. But then someone was very clever to improvise a small LED lamp. And this works on six volts, and st still children can enjoy that. And it's part of a school. <laughs> uh, the top of the roof is a dome in this school, the New English school. And this school is a very old school, 1880. And this planetarium was set up in 1954. The oldest planetarium, it's a small planetarium, it accommodates about 60 children, but it is nice, very homely, uh, not, uh, it's a very nice place. Very cool, very cool. You had another one made with a, because you said bicycles are, 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 are a very important method of transportation, so you had one with a bicycle spoke that I'd love to see again. Since our audience sure. hasn't seen it, the, the woodpecker. <laughs> Woodpecker. Woodpecker is very, very simple to make. You see, well, this is what, what the model is like. And uh, this is, uh, you just have a, you know, take, take a bicycle spoke and wind some copper wire on the bicycle spoke. So this is the small spring, and it's got a small leg over here. And then you attach it. This is the cardboard woodpecker. And then if you just put it inside, a, if you just put it inside, uh, 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 and you can just see this. <laughs> I love that so much. And there's there's your oscillation right there. There's your your, your yes. oscillation because, motion. Because it's slightly loose over here, so it's sliding, and the weight is concentrated on one side only. So it's it's sliding, it's slipping, sliding, and slipping. So it comes it comes down in very small, it's very small jerks like this, and which is very interesting to children. Very intriguing motion of this uh, woodpecker. It's interesting to me, and I'm an adult. <laughs> 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 this is another one, uh, which is like a this like a bow and arrow. Now this is uh, this you can see is like a bow. This we use a broomstick. This is the midrib of the coconut front. Uh, India is seven thousand kilometers of coastline, and coconut is very much part of our la curries. This is a old pen. So you just make a hole and weave the thread with the pen. Now over here, what I have is a uh, is, is a card. Um, this is a reefer and a card on top. Which has got a, you can see there's a cage over here and there's a bird on the other. And children could play it like this, and you would see that the bird is in the cage. But this is a much, much beautiful mechanism. So, with, with the ball print reefer, first I remove the thread, and then I turn it at right angles and I push it inside. Now, what is happening? The thread is going inside the sketch pen, taking a round of the reefer. And what you see right now is the cage. Now the bird, the cage, and if I, oh. and you can see the cage. Now this is uh, uh, all about persistence of vision. It's also a machine which converts straight line motion of the bow into the into the spinning motion of the reefer. So it's a beautiful machine which converts straight line into rotary motion. And so there are many many possibilities with a thing like this. And we say, well, if you are not interested in science. I personally feel that more children should be writing poetry.
become artists and become writers. Because many scientists have also contributed to wars. Yeah. You see, scientists who have made the atom bomb and the hydrogen bomb and all the missiles, which is so sad. Today, most of the budgets in many of the poor countries are going to buy missiles and bombs and the aircraft carriers, which is so sad. Sensitive governments could invest into education, into health and housing for their people, and then the world would be such a safer place. So science is not a holy cow. We must critically look at science. There are benefits of science, and there are evils of science. And I think uh, most, uh, you know, after the Second World War, many scientists uh, swore that they would have nothing to do with war. Because science, many scientists are very sensitive people. Uh, many had seen uh, that there was a very, 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 very famous British cosmologist. Uh, I'm forgetting his name, but after the Second World War, he swore he'd seen the Second World War. Millions of people die. And he said that he would do nothing. So he went into cosmology, which has nothing to do with earthly affairs. And he won the Nobel Prize. Martin Ryan. Sir Martin Ryan. Yes, yes, yes. He's wow. Sir Martin Ryan. And just before his death, he wrote a testimony, which is famous as Martin Ryan's last testimony. And in this testimony, he said that today all my researches in cosmology are being used to make missiles. And I, had I known that my research would be used for warfare, I would just remain a simple farmer and grown potatoes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is this is the outcry of a very, very sensitive scientist. And I think we must, there are great benefits of science, and we must bring it. Today we can produce enough grain to feed the world. We can do many, many good things which we could not do. So we should not be hypocritic and be luddite and degrade technology. Because the technology has given us the very fact that I'm able to talk to you the thousands of kilometers away, I owe it to technology. And we must, we, we must use it for a much larger social end, to, to, to eliminate misery and poverty in the world, and to make children laugh. I think that's the whole purpose. <laughs> that is also a very worthy goal. <laughs> so you have all these videos in different languages. Um, are you still looking for translators to help with no, that? Absolutely. You know, in many of the Indian languages, some, once in a while we meet a person uh, like we met uh, Professor Breezy O'Connor Flacker in Spanish, but in, in many parts, uh, you know, in, in many other languages like Italian or French or German and uh, Russian, uh, we have very few, uh, very few people who would dub. And this is to invite uh, the teachers from various countries because all that we do is in the Creative Commons, is in the free public domain, uh, to dub these videos and put it on YouTube because uh, they can be accessed. And if the, if the video is in the, the local language, it is like magic to children. Because uh, if a person loves uh, his or her own language, they understand best in their own language. So if it's in their language, well, I think it would be magical. And we, we invite all teachers to participate in this effort. So you hear that, everybody. Because I know we do have a, an international audience for the show. And uh, so we are looking for more languages. Um, yes, and unfortunately, they're not on right now. Most of the Europeans are still in, in bed. They'll be seeing this in a few hours, <laughs> so hopefully you'll get some volunteers from that. And what can people do if, if they have ideas? I mean, you have a thousand toys on here, but I'm sure there's still ideas that people have that you haven't done. What should they do? Absolutely. They can write to us uh, at uh, arvindtoys at gmail.com, A-R-V-I-N-D-G-U-P-T-A at gmail.com, and they can just send us a few photographs. And what we do is we'll try and make a video out of it. And credit the person who has come, you know, inspired by so and so, designed by so and so. And this is what we have done a lot in the past. Uh, many creative people come to our center, but we're extremely quick, okay, quick at documentation. Sometimes we, you know, uh, err here and there, but that is that doesn't mean that we might be sitting on our asses. We do it, and then people tell us this is not very good, so we try to do a better job next time. But we will document your toys if you like them. Certainly, we will document and credit everyone where the ideas come from. Excellent, excellent. So yeah, the, the website um, is arvindguptatoys.com. I will be putting that link in the show notes uh, and in the comments for this event so you guys can click right on that link. And can I put your email address in there as well? Yes, sure, certainly. arvindtoys at gmail.com. And here is another wonderful toy made with a straw. Now this is a fat straw, as you can see. That This is a fat straw. And we've just taped both the ends with black tape 
the transparent it would not show and then with the scissors we have just nipped the the bottom right corner and the top right corner so there are two diametrically opposite holes you can see a hole over here and a hole over here now this is a straw with a hole over here i put this inside the this shut this and <laughs> Now with two straws, you can make a beautiful spinner. And this is Newton's third law of motion. Air comes out from here and gives it a kick in the opposite direction. It comes out here, and this, so it gets a torque in this direction. If I were to reverse it, uh, and then the direction of rotation spin will also change. As you can see, something which costs no money, but something which is dynamic, which spins, which makes some noise, is always exciting for children. And this is one of our very popular toys. And not just children. Like I said, I'm I'm amazed by all of these. I love these, and I want to go start making them now. One is just with the matchbox, and you can see the small bird pecking. This is just a small hinge, a wire, and you can see at this angle. And it's it's a very very simple thing. It's like a pecking bird. <laughs> And we get to have a very simple mechanism, but it's a very doable thing. And uh, I think this is not textbook science because uh, textbook science is often very, very boring. And uh, if we supplement it with drawings like this, which all contain elements of science, then science will become absolutely magical and exciting for children. That's excellent. We are getting close to the, the top of the hour. Um, you have had some helpers around you. I was wondering if they were interested in saying hello on camera. Well, that would be very nice. Uh, are they are they around, you, your helpers? No. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> my people over here. Now, I'll just introduce. Now, this is, this is my colleague, Ashok. And he's the one who has made uh, all the videos together. Uh, he's made about 700 videos with a camera which costs less than $200. So we are the most cost-effective science center. This is uh, this is Shivaji, and he's he's a tall man, so he's got to bend down. And uh, he he's the one who goes to various villages, and uh, because village schools have no science uh, laboratories, and he shares the excitement of science with, with thousands of uh, village children and teachers. Uh, next is uh, Dr. Vidla Meisker. And she, she, she's a microbiologist. Uh, she was at Stanford for four years, did a postdoc. And then 10 years back, she decided to join us. She said, I want to work with you. Oh, she's no. also the school of our center, a very wonderful person. And it's only because of this very wonderful team that um, when the last is, this is Jyoti Hiramit. Uh, she scans a lot of books every day. We have 4,000 books on our website. Oh. Trust me, every single day, 15,000 books get downloaded. And these are passionate books on education, on environment, on science, on peace, on mathematics, great children's literature in many, many Indian languages and in English. And we credit her for scanning. Today she has scanned maybe two books in the morning and by evening we upload them. Because technology, many of our schools have, have, have libraries but they're locked for children. They're not accessible to children. Now new technology enables us to share our passions 15,000 books being downloaded every day. Now, this is, this I think, is, it's a very deeply uh, satisfying work that you're sharing because it just shows the hunger of knowledge amongst our children and teachers. And you know, we are looking at books which are 50 years back, 40 years back. Lots of books by Isaac Asimov. Trust me, we have 36 books by Isaac Asimov in the local language of Marathi. How do we find out about black holes? How do we find out about germs? 36 books by the greatest science writer in the world. Yeah. But this is a small task. Bring the best to our children and our teachers and share it freely. Because this is what the future is. This is what technology enables us to do. We are privileged to, you know, we earn a living. That's all right. And uh, there is no end to human greed. It's pitless. So we must not fall into this trap. Our security is our children. If we invest in our children and our teachers, I think someday India would become a better place to live in. Oh my gosh, that is so inspiring and exactly what I needed this week, I think, because the things going on around us in the world are, are scary and terrifying and not peaceful. 
Uh, and so just, just talking about this has been really inspiring for me, as I'm sure it has been for all of our viewers. I have one more question. How did you get involved? How did you get started doing this? What, well, like, what's your background? Well, I, I think that I'm, I'm a first generation uh, learner. My parents never went to school. But I had an extremely wise, unschooled mother because she had learned so much from the struggles of her life. And I was a tinkerer as a child, you know, playing. I had a small box with a broken hammer, with a wrench, with some grease. And I would be pottering around doing things for hours. And she just let me be. Never asked about examinations, about homework. She said, well, let the, let the chap be. He's happy, let him be. Oh, extremely wise mother, I must say. And then I got into uh, the best engineering college, which is the Indian School of Technology at Kanpur, and which opened up a new world for me. And I, I studied entirely on public expense uh, because it was much cheaper for my parents to send me to the IIT, the best engineering college, than to keep me at home because I got a free ship, I got a fellowship, so food was free over there. So I've done my entire education on public expense. And I think uh, I always wanted to become a school teacher. And I'm really privileged that now I'm not, I don't work in a particular school, but I help teachers across the world through my small work. Is teachers and children. I think it's uh, it's better than to be just a teacher in a school to help many, many uh, thousands of teachers and millions of children across the world. So I think I've been deeply privileged. If I were to, uh, you know, had a chance of living this life again, I think I've had so much of pleasure. Uh, 3,000 schools and everywhere you find bad management, bad principals, bad teachers, never a bad child. So <laughs> children are great hope for me. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Arvin, so much for sharing all of the the amazing things you've put together and your passion for this work and for, oh my god, putting out this amazing resource for, for everybody to use around the world. I'm going to be sharing this. Um, we're going to be share, our viewers, I'm sure, are going to be sharing this as well. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast. Thank you to your whole team for supporting you. And I, I need to say a thank to my team too, because uh, they do all the hard work and I do all the credit. Sometimes it can be very embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you definitely look like you have the best job in the world. I think you are one of the happiest people I've ever met. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everyone, for watching the show. Um, this will be up on YouTube, and we'll have the audio-only podcast version on 365 Days of Astronomy. Uh, Arvind Gupta, thank you so much for being on the show. And everybody else, uh, we'll be back next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.